you guys different and fighting at each other's throats, the hatred that you have against a Muslim in your heart, the hiqt, malice. You see a Christian walk by, you see a Sikh walk by, you'll speak to them, you'll hold the door for them. You see a brother with a beard and a thobe and it's a... That, that can't be right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. Uh, hope you guys are doing well, inshallah. Uh, before I start, I want to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most just. All praise, glory, and gratitude belong to Him. Um, we are in California, alhamdulillah, it's been an amazing event. Uh, we had uh, the hijab debate and we've been having talks in different places, tackling different issues. Uh, and alhamdulillah, we um, came across um, the sheikhs. May Allah bless them, inshallah. It's an honor to be amongst them um, and um, with uh, Sheikh Mufti. When we were supposed to meet him in New York, and Qadr Allah was talking about it, and it's, it's so profound because uh, we was on the way to see him in New York. And some miscommunication happened, something like you wasn't well or something. He was actually on the way. And was told, oh, he's not well. And we just did a U-turn and went to uh, another restaurant. And then was told, oh, no, that wasn't the case. But anyways, it was, it was disappointing because we really wanted to see him. And we came to California, he jabs the bait, and I'm sitting there. And, you know, my vision has been not good re recently. And I see somebody coming to uh, Baba Muhammad's job. And I'm okay, it looks a bit familiar. So I was just, I got a bit closer and I was like, subhanAllah, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. And actually, um, we were staying in the masjid in the room. And, um, and they told us, okay, there's this a sheikh coming. And so we didn't know who he was, and you know, we had to evacuate and get kicked out. And subhanallah, <laughs> subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. I'm joking. And everyone goes through this phase where you just, you know, you just. You, you just Gung ho. Whoa, yeah, and then everyone, and you give label, you look down on people. Now, how does someone deal with that? Because when they go into this realm, it's, it's, it causes more damage. Christ and then you have, and, and then one thing that I don't see is like, Sometimes I'm with certain brothers, etc. And, you know, I think, and I'm around and I'm thinking to myself, was the Salaf really like this? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. the way you see another believer and because you deem him to be something else and the hatred you have towards him and to, to the level where if you saw him being attacked on the street, you're, you're happy. And I was thinking, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, was the Salaf really like, like this? But then when we're around certain brothers and the love that we see, you know, what advice would you give to youngsters um, who are going through this phase and, and I've seen a lot of people, they actually go through this phase and then they come out, they have a burnout and then they come out. What advice would you give to those youngsters that are watching um, and having this kind of mentality, this kind of thought process, if you get what I'm trying to say? Clear. Um, yeah, and as a little continuation before they start, I don't want to hog the mic as we say. Huh? Yeah. Uh, they're running from it, but it's okay. They're putting <laughs> it on me. Huh? At the end of the day, yeah. at the end of the day um, it's very disheartening. Yeah. It, it makes you sad. But at the same time, like I just said, it should make you happy because it's a manifest, manifestation of what is mentioned. Mm -hmm. They will continue to differ except for those whom Allah has mercy. Mm -hmm. So you guys differing and fighting at each other's throats, the hatred that you have against a Muslim in your heart, mm -hmm. the hiqt, malice. You see a Christian walk by, you see a Sikh walk by, you'll speak to them, you'll hold the door for them. You see a brother with a beard and a thobe and it's a... That, that can't be right. Even if he's doing something wrong, but that cannot be right that I have such a stone face against a Muslim and I have a smile when I see a polytheist, a mushrik, and I speak to them and I'm nice to them. That doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So that's a very, very long discussion with, the guard, with regards to the different dawahs and the different groups and scholars and translations and harshness. And that's a long, long, long discussion. My advice to the youngsters that get caught up and swallowed in all of this stuff um, is a, uh, a statement that some of the scholars of Islam used to say, Yuridu an yatir walamma yurayish. The birdie wants to fly, but he still has bushy feathers. The birdie wants to soar and swoop down, but it's still in the nest, and it doesn't have long and straight feathers yet. You just, yesterday you were a Christian. Yesterday you were smoking weed with tattoos, chasing girls. Mm -hmm. Now you're an expert on al-jarah wa ta'deel. Now you're an expert on who's a mubtadi and who's dal and who's mudil. Where'd you study at, Akhi? Where'd you study at? Just a basic, basic question. Did you study anything formal? Just yesterday you were this and you were that. Now you're this grand master of ilm. 
يريد أن يطير ولا ما يريش. He wants to soar like the falcon, swoop down, and he still has bushy feathers. Just yesterday, he was being fed worms. And anyone who studies uh, birds of prey, you know how difficult it is to actually have a successful hunt. It's not like it's on TV or a movie. Falcons and eagles, they oftentimes starve. It's not easy to catch that rabbit or that rat in the field. It takes a great deal of skill and practice. Mm -hmm. So just yesterday you were in the nest squeaking for a worm and now you're trying to soar down on other Muslims, brothers that have been overseas, that have ijazah, that memorize the Quran, that have qira'at, qira'at, versions of recitation. And you just yesterday were upon Allahu Alam. That's my advice, is to look at your feathers. How long are your feathers? How, what color are your feathers? Baby owls don't look nothing like adult owls. They're different colors, let alone the nature of their feathers. So Al-Dhahabi, um, he quoted this about a, 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 a muhaddith or a student of hadith that was trying to, you know, butt heads with some other people. He says, يريد أن يطير ولا ما يريش. He wants to soar, but he doesn't have long feathers. So, يعني, إعرف قدر نفسك. Know yourself. No, learn your, your place. He may be a mubtadid. Mumkin. Maybe. Maybe I'm a deviant or you're a deviant. It's possible. But it's not for you to say that. Because just yesterday you were eating worms. You're not hunting in the field like that. You don't have no, 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 no knowledge advice. like that. Let's go back to your analogy. It's like talking about the counterfeit money. Mm. And, but not everyone knows how to tell the notes. Mm. We're going to the sheikh level. I want to get him involved. Yeah. And mashallah, this is one of your areas of um, aqidah and all these things. And mashallah, you know, the sheikh studied in Azhar. And uh, he's teaching in, uh, in Berkeley University here uh, in California, so he's much qualified. Um, and we're, we're, first and foremost, I, I thank both of you once again just for coming here and sharing your knowledge with us. Um, so the question is now, because this is a matter of knowing the notes, right? Not everyone knows how to know the notes. Not everyone knows how to distinguish the counterfeit money from the real money. And... When people do try and do that, once again, it causes this social division, which doesn't necessarily need to exist. Mm. And I've made the point that in America, for example, when I looked at the numbers, 23% of Muslims are becoming apostates, according to Pew Research, 23%, which is a massive number. And some of the reason for that is because they see internal conflict. I'm not saying that that, that conflict should never exist, but I'm just saying that you know, this is an issue. So can you give us a little bit more information on who is qualified, who are the qualified people to deal with this matter of not just tabdiya but all um, kinds of labeling yeah. in Islam. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In reality, this phenomenon that you're referring to, where people, as soon as they begin iltizam, mm. as soon as they begin to become religious, mm. they start to grow their beard, they start to shorten their thobe, and so on, they automatically think that they are the greatest of scholars. Mm. Right? As the ulama, they say, the knowledge is of hand spans. Mm. The first hand span, you read one book, you think you're the most knowledgeable person in the world. Mm. The last hand span, you end, you actually find out that you know nothing. When Spanish. you actually finish seeking knowledge, you know that you don't know, no, you know nothing. Mm -hmm. And so, I believe that this phenomenon, the number one reason for its spreading is being impatient ala talab. Being impatient with seeking knowledge. You want to reach a station that you have not matured for yet. You want to reach a station that you are not qualified, qualified for yet. Mm -hmm. As soon as you read one book, two books, you end up thinking that you are going to pass judgment on this imam mm -hmm. and this scholar and you're going to debate this person. This is the most dangerous thing upon Islam. Mm -hmm. Not just for you, upon other Muslims too. As the ulama, they said, the most dangerous thing is half a faqih. SubhanAllah. Half a faqih. Same thing. Half a linguist, mm -hmm. half an usuli, mm -hmm. half a muhaddith. Half a doctor. <laughs> half a doctor. <laughs> You're, you, could, you start giving fatwas and send someone in the wrong direction. Mm. And end up actually debating an atheist mm. or debate someone from one of the devious sects. And then Muslims hear this debate and you don't have the knowledge to debate him. And they hear that. You send the, you send the <laughs> other one. No, no, no. Stop, <laughs> like, yeah, no you're, you're ahl al -dhalik, yani, <laughs> But uh, those people who are not qualified yeah. have not matured yet. Mm. We do with salah, right? When zakah yeah. of crops and so on and selling mm -hmm. uh, crops. You have to have that maturity. You have to be ripe. And that's why some of the ulama, they said that you shouldn't write books before the age of 40. Some of our ulama, they said mm -hmm. you shouldn't write books before the age of 40. Yeah. Because your mind isn't full, fully developed yet. Mm. And that's why we see even from amongst the sahaba, where some companions would not speak in the presence of other companions who are more knowledgeable. Allah. They would not speak. Even the, It's a sahabi. But he would not speak in the presence of someone who is more knowledgeable.
And so, dear brothers and sisters, I really want to emphasize this concept that before you begin to judge other scholars or other imams, or this one's an innovator and this one is wrong, and this is the authentic hadith, this is the weak hadith, mm. this is a deviant opinion, this is a rajah opinion, you have to reach the level that these scholars reach first. Mm. SubhanAllah, a person came to Imam Malik and said, you have placed in your muwatta the hadith that the buyer and seller have the option, have the option to rescind the contract. Mm. But you don't act upon it. Imam Malik, he said, I placed that hadith in my book so someone like you, a fool, an ignorant person like you, wouldn't come later and say that you didn't know the hadith. Exactly. I know the hadith, but I have other evidences why I didn't take the hadith. Mm. This is a phenomenon that really is causing the destruction of Islam. SubhanAllah, some people say, you know, go against the Shafi'i Madhab. He didn't have the hadith. Mm. He, you know, he didn't know the evidence. And Imam Shafi'i, same, someone came up to him and said something similar to that. He said, SubhanAllah, am I, how do you think I don't act upon the hadith? Mm. Do you see a zunnah? Do you see the belt of the Christians around my waist? Mm. Do you see me going to a church, coming out of a church? <laughs> of course I'm going to act upon the hadith. Mm. But I have other evidences that made me realize that this is the correct hadith, not this one. Mm. Like Imam Tirmidhi, he mentions all the time in his book, that, forgive me, no, no, uh, Muhaddis, forgive me. He said, this is, he mentions the hadith, it can be authentic, mm. and there's no amal upon it. Mm. He says it's not upon it. Subhan then there's a weak hadith, wal amal alayhi. SubhanAllah. Mm. The, act, the scholars act upon it. Subhanallah, Ibn, Ibn Khuzayma he said that there is no hadith in halal and haram except the Shafi'i Nur. Like Ibn Rajab he said that Imam Ahmad, all the hadiths were presented to him and evidences. And he knew what to take and what not to take. What was shad and what was acted upon. What was strong and what was weak. Mm. So how are we going to come later on mm. after reading one book, two books in English. Mm -hmm. And now we're, this one's a mubtada. No, Shafi'i was wrong. Malik was wrong. Ahmad was wrong. This is the right answer. This person's this. This is not the way. This is not the way to seek knowledge. I just want to stay, finish on the statement because what you said is very true. Because and there is a, a statement which I don't know who it's from. He said a scholar knows who's a jahil because he was once one, but a mm, jahil never Allah. knows who's a scholar Allah because Allah. he was never one. Allah Allah. And it's such a profound statement. And I just want to stand, like, finish off with this dollar bill because, like you said, uh, Mufti, that we have the pen to know if it's fake or not. But when the pen is given to those who think they know it's what is correct or not, and they mark it and say to a real note it's fake, it causes problems as well. Because he's going to be telling people, oh, this is fake. Why? Because he doesn't have experience and he's marked it wrong. And I just want to uh, st finish on that statement, inshallah, and keep this dollar bill. Allah, <laughs> it's all right. It's all good. Uh, uh, <laughs> may Allah bless you guys. Wallahi, it's been absolutely amazing, profound. Inshallah, brothers who are watching this, inshallah, uh, they can benefit from this, inshallah. And yeah, may Allah bless you. Well, it's absolutely an honor uh, to have you guys around. Same and here. We, and we always, always ask our youngsters, this is something in salam, something that we do, to always refer to people of knowledge. Always, always, because misguidance happens because of, yes, I know, and me. If you hear somebody say me, I, us, you're always going to see this. Sheikh has a YouTube channel. Cool. Yes, Hadith. yes, inshallah, yes, definitely. Hadith, uh, disciples. disciples. Yes, inshallah, and if the other sheikh is going to make uh, yes. I'm waiting till I, my mind ripens first. And then <laughs> no, you then don't have to. Inshallah, do follow them. 40, inshallah. Years, 40 years, then get a YouTube channel. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. no, for YouTube, box. you don't need for you. Yeah. Yes, we're going to put the description box, inshallah, you can follow them. Uh, till next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.